Masaichi Kaneda won 400 games through his 20-year NPB career. During that time, he won three ERA titles, 10 Strikeout King awards, and three straight Sawamura awards, cementing his place as the greatest Japanese-born pitcher of all time. He also kicked a guy in the face once, and I want to talk about it. It's May 19th, 1991. We're way out in the boonies for the second of two countryside games at Akita Sports Park between the Kintetsu Buffaloes and the Lote Orions. Even though it was still very early in the season, Seibu was already charging away from the pack, and the Orions, Buffaloes, and Nippon Ham fighters were jockeying for position to take advantage of an unlikely line slide. Thanks to a 6-3 win the previous day, the Buffaloes had now brought themselves even with the Orions at 15 and 15. While this was smack dab in the middle of the Bryant, Nomo, Oishi, Kanemura era, there's another player on that team who often gets overlooked in retrospectives. The Buffaloes had grabbed Jim Traber for the 1990 season after he got cut by the Orioles, and he played rather well for them, putting up an 840 OPS and 24 homers in his first year in Osaka. Even though he led Pacific League in hits, offensively he was probably the third best player on the team that year, behind Daijiro Oishi and Yoshiaki Kanemura but it was still easily enough to keep him on for the 1991 season. He also had a bit of a reputation as a hothead, which was helped on by the fact that he was a major booze hound. To quote Connie Murrah, who he became close with, Traber's staple food was beer. We'd go out to eat together and the only thing he'd order was beer. We'd all be eating, and he'd be knocking back bottle after bottle. However, Traber did do a lot to endear himself to the members of the clubhouse as well as the Japanese fans. Kanemura described him as my American cousin, and the fact that he sent his daughter to a public elementary school instead of a private academy, as was the norm, gave him a good reputation among Buffalo's fans, who saw it as him saying that he was there for the long haul. At this point in time, Traber was having a pretty decent start to the year. Coming into this game, he was batting 263, 333, 429 for a 772 OPS and 5 home runs, and he'd driven in 21. Although he was playing alright, he was nowhere near the main focus in the Buffaloes lineup. That's because Ralph Bryant had already hit 12 home runs. But it was enough the pitchers were still looking out for him. And now, I'm going to break down what happened in the only style that seems appropriate. So this one showed up in my request box today. This one's brought to you by Questionably Legal Sports Betting Site. So we got Lotte versus Kintetsu, apparently. This is a very small ballpark. I don't know what's up with that. So we got 28s on the mound, and he's going to be facing off against Traber. And so he's going to wind up, and boom, hits Traber right in the back. Traber's going to drop his helmet, charge the mound. So he's going to, Traber's going to go out, and he's going to dodge one tackle from his teammate, two tackles from his teammate, three tackles from his teammate. Now he's going to go right after the pitcher. They're in the outfield. He dodges another tackle from a Lote player, and he grabs the pitcher and takes him down. Now it's just a big scrum as they're trying to get Traber off his pitcher. And now all the bullpens are here. Hey, how are you doing? Let's get a close-up on the pile here. It's just a big mess as they're trying to pull Traber off. And hey, here comes Diaz just skipping right on in there. So now the umpires are working on getting everyone separated. This lady's loving it right here. Looking just clapping along, clapping along. Not a care in the world. The Orion's manager's not happy. Traber's not happy. He's jawing away. You can't really make it out because it's so low poly. But uh, pitcher's dusting himself off. Ready to get on the mound. Traber looks to have calmed down. He got something in my eye right there. Mitsuyama's pointing at someone, and we're going to see this happen again because Traber... Now, Traber's going to hear something. He's not going to like it, so he's going to charge right at him. The manager has no idea he's coming. Oh, now he sees it, and he, boom, gets out the catcher, but he loses his balance, and boom, right in the face. Did you see that? Slow fall on his face, and boom, right there, right in the face. That's got to hurt. Oh, right in the face. So, yeah, Japanese baseball in the 90s. Managers are just out there kicking people. This episode is brought to you by questionably legal sports betting site. Be sure to use code Gaijin Baseball. Win some money. You probably won't, but hey, I'm selling a fantasy here. Okay, that's enough. So naturally, Traber gets thrown out of the game, and he would later be handed a five-game suspension and a two million yen fine. Meanwhile, Kaneda goes on his merry way, and the Orions won 6-4. That night, Kaneda got a call from the Buffalo's manager, Akira Ogi. Ogi told him very bluntly, Traber's pissed, and if he sees you out at the bar tonight, I'm not responsible for what happens. So, Kaneda spent the night in the hotel. In reality, Traber was in the hospital because, you know, he'd just been kicked in the face with spikes, but the scare tactic still worked. Because Karma's a bitch, the Orions would almost immediately fall off and would finish the year in last place. So, Kaneda was fired at the end of the year. 
The year would also be Traber's last in Japan, as the fact that he raked in the awards at the end of the year led to a contract dispute with the Buffaloes at the end of the season. He wanted a million dollars. The Buffaloes were only prepared to pay him 700000 Traber would take a year out, play one more year with Sultanes de Monterrey in the LMB, and then call it a career. And despite his fairly impressive resume in his very short time in Japan, he's still best remembered for getting kicked in the face by Masaichi Kaneda. You can't choose your legacy. Fuck!